back to my channel. Today I'll be looking at the CSEC Mathematics January 2020-21 paper 2. I'll be covering question 5 and 6 of this paper. So if you're stopping by my channel for the first time, welcome and please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so that you know when new videos are being uploaded. Also, give this video a thumbs up by liking it so that it can go far and wide to as many students as possible so that they can get prepared for the upcoming exams. So let's get into this paper. So question five, here it says, 60 students took an algebra test which comprised 15 multiple choice questions the number of correct answers that each student obtained is recorded in the table below. So there we have it, the number of correct answers and the number of students. Using the table, determine one, the number of students who had exactly 13 correct answers. And based on our given information here, 13 correct answers, that's 11 students. So that's one mark. Two says the model number of correct answers now we know when we hear the modal number that is the score that actually occurs the most in the given information that we have there and when we take a look look at the the, the students number of students who got the um, correct answer nine here we notice here 14 students so that's the 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 modal number here the one that occurs the most so nine would be your answer for that the third part says the medium number of correct answers now we know median is actually the middle number that is given so based on our data based on our information here for the 60 students we know it is 60 so the, in the middle it would be 30 would be here and then the 30 from this bottom half would be here at 13. So we have 12 and 13. So the, we have the 38th and the 31st number. So that would be 12 and 13. So what we do, we add them, we add them together and then we divide that by two to get our median number, which is 12.5. And that's one mark. So that's easy. So let's go to number the second part of five it says the probability that a student chosen at random had at least 12 correct answers now from our given data the number of students with at least 12 correct answer for us to find the probability would have to divide that into the total number of students and we just took this information from the number of students with at least 12 correct answers and they are two 11, 9, and 10. So that, that is who got 12 correct answers. So what we did, we add that total and then we divide it into the number of students. So that's 32 into 60 and we simplify that down and we get 8 over 15. So that's the probability. And you'll get one mark for that. So that shouldn't take you too long to work out. Let's go on to the B part of 5. It says a group of students wrote a physics examination. Each of the students achieved a grade one, two, three, or four. The pie chart below shows the results. So here we have it, one, two, three, and four. Now it says 39 students achieved a grade three. Here we have it. And then the first part says, determine the total number of students who wrote the examination. So here we have three. They gave us 39 students. We notice it is out of 117 degrees and then the entire um total number for the entire pie chart is 360 degrees so when we multiply that 39 into 117 of 360 we get 120 students so that's the total number of students who wrote the examinations very simple let's move on to the next part it says the ratio of the number of students who achieved a grade one, two, three, or four is two to four to three. A student passed that examination if she achieved a grade one, two, or three. How many students passed the examination? 
Now, they gave us the number of students achieving grade one, two, or, 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 or four. So that is, so we got, that was 120. And then we did up 39 students as was given in the data. So that's 81 students. Now, what we have to do, they gave us the ratio of two to four to three. Now that's a total part of nine parts. So let's work out the fraction now to find out how many students. So grade one, we notice it was two. So two out of nine parts of the 81 students who achieved grade one, two, or four. So two ninth of 81, we get 18 students. Now for grade two, it was four as given in the information. So four out of nine parts of the 81 students. So for grade two, that is 36 students. So let's add our total now to find out how many students pass the examination. So what we do now, we add grade one and grade two, and then we were given grade four, which was 39. So those three figures, 18 plus 36 plus 39, that's a total of 93 students. So that's how we arrived at that. Now three says, determine the value of the angle for the sector representing grade one on the pie chart. Now, since we know grade one, we already had worked out that, which is 18. So we find 18 of the amount of students, 120, and then we multiply that by 360 degrees and therefore the value of the angle at representing grade one would be 54 degrees so since we had already found out that so we just simply plug in our values and represent it since we know that 18 students as we worked here to find out that it's 18 students for grade one there we have it let's move on to the next part six it says, in this question, take pi to be 22 over 7. The diagram below shows a rectangular tank with base 50 centimeter by 40 centimeter. That is used to store water. The tank is filled with water to a depth of 15 centimeters. And there you have it. Calculate the volume of water in the tank. Now we know that the volume of a cylinder is length times width times height. Now the, the, the volume of water in the tank is length times breadth times height and as we see here we get that information here we have our length and our breadth right and we're given our height so we simply plug in that information so 40 multiply by 50 multiply by 15 cubic centimeter and that gives us 30,000 cubic centimeters. So that's the volume of the water in the tank. And that's two marks. So that shouldn't take, take it too long. Let's go on to the B part. It says the cylindrical container shown in the diagram below is used to fetch more water to fill the water tank. The container, which is completely filled with water, has a radius of 20 centimeters and a height of 21 centimeters. So all the water in this container is added to the water in the rectangular tank. Calculate the total volume of water that is now in the rectangular tank. So we know volume of the cylindrical container equal pi r square h, that's the formula. Now we know we're given pi 22 over seven. And here we have r square, here we have it 20 centimeter and our height 21 centimeters. So we simply plug in the information and when we work that out, we get 26,400 cubic centimeter. Now it, it wants us to calculate the total volume of water that is in the tank. So what we simply do, what we had already um, worked out here at the front here, since we already had worked out the volume of water in the tank so that figure plus the volume of the cylindrical container would give us the total volume of water that is in the rectangular tank so 30,000 cubic centimeters 
gives us 26,400 cubic centimeter. That gives us 56,400 cubic centimeter. So that's your answer. Three marks for that. Let's go to 6C. It says, show that the new depth of water in the rectangular tank is 28.2 centimeter. Now, from our given information, we know that the volume of water in the rectangular tank is 56,400. We just worked that out. Now, we know that the volume is equal to the area of the base times the depth or the height. So the area of the base is length times width, and that is 50 times 40. And we want to calculate the depth, so we multiply that by the depth or the height we're trying to find out. So let's plug in our information. So that is equal to the volume of water, which is 56,400. So when we multiply that out, 50 by 40, that is 2,000. And so we're trying to find the depth. So depth equal 56,400 divided by 2,000. And therefore, we arrive at 28.2 centimeter. So that's the new depth of the water in the rectangular tank. Let's move on to the D part of this question. It says, the vertical height of the rectangular tank is 48 centimeter. Determine how many more cylindrical containers of water must be poured into the rectangular tank for it to be completely filled. So here we have our volume. We know that is equal to length times width times height. And we plug in that information because we now get the height, 48 centimeter. So 40, we are at the length and the width already. So we multiply all those figures and we get 96,000 cubic centimeter. Now we're like seeking to find now when we look at the additional volume of water, that is the 96,000 cubic centimeter, and we're going to have to deduct that from the new depth of water that we got in the in C, which is 56,400 cubic centimeter, and that gives us 39,600 cubic centimeter. Now we are trying to find the volume of one cylindrical container. Now what we would have to do, it it, it Based on the information given, we know that they, we, we found that out already 26,400, one cylindrical container. We worked that out. So therefore, what we would do is the additional volume of water, we divide that into the volume of one cylindrical container. And therefore, that gives us 1.5 containers. So that is how as it says how many more cylindrical containers of water it would take um for the rectangular tank to be completely filled that's that's the amount 1.5 container that's two mark okay so we'll stop here for today so we have covered question the csec mathematics january 2021 question five and six so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.